Good afternoon. Uh, you're here for the uh, how to design a system to ensure you deliver on your promise as you scale up webinar. Uh, you're all muted at the moment. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we'll just give it a, uh, till like 12.01, uh, see if any, uh, there's anyone else to join and then we'll make a start. So just bear with us uh, for a few moments, uh, then we'll get going. So yeah, it's a beautiful uh, sunny day here in Brighton. So um, making the most of the uh, Indian summer before it gets cold and we have to turn the heating on. So that's all good. And uh, we'll just wait till 12.01 and then, then we'll get into it. So it's 12.01, so let's make a start. So yeah, um, so we're Digital Freelance. We're a digital marketing agency based in Brighton. Uh, we started in March 2016. And uh, over that six and a half year period, we've worked with a lot of startups. Uh, and we've been a startup ourselves and then uh, turned into a scale up. And uh, that transition from startup to scale up seems to be a really important one, uh, both in terms of your own business and also in terms of the clients that you're looking for and also um, how you can help them to make that transition and that transition I know that I both I wrote a blog in uh, Mar uh, I think 2017 uh, called how to fine tune and scale up your marketing campaigns and at that time I thought that scaling up was just about marketing uh, how wrong was I so yeah there's a lot of aspects a lot of moving parts to scaling up that's what we're really going to be talking about today uh, and the system uh, systems that you might uh, want to use um, in order to help you to scale up. Um, one of our marketing clients, I think possibly in the very early days of digital freelance, maybe even before, uh, was called Melissa Hughes. Uh, and I helped her to market a, uh, uh, a an online course called Systems Are Sexy. Uh, and at the time I was writing all the copy and kind of, but not really understanding what she meant, if I'm really honest. Uh, but now through six and a half years of experience, I now have a much uh, better idea of what she was talking about. Um, so you're very welcome, as I said. So without further ado, let's get into uh, the webinar. So, <coughs> excuse me if I cough a little bit, I'm just recovering from some kind of strange lurgy. So um, so apologies if, I, if my uh, presentation is interrupted by mild bouts of coughing. Hopefully there won't be too many. Uh, so, so when you're uh, making the transition from startup to scale up, there are, there are several indicators that you're in that in that transition, if that makes sense. The first one is getting clear on how you use your time. I always say that startups are time rich, but money poor generally, unless they're very well funded. And so we always recommend startups to hustle before anything else, which is go out there, network, make phone calls, send emails, whatever you need to do uh, to, get, to get clients. Uh, over over time, generally, as you get busy and start to serve more and more clients, you become time poor but money rich. Uh, that's the time to set clear priorities so that you utilize your time effectively and as you build a team to, to use the team's time effectively as well. Uh, second thing is destination. When you start, literally when we opened our agency, which as I said is a bricks and mortar agency, anyone who came in the door would be a client effectively. And we worked with a lot of startups. We had a very low cost marketing package, but I realized after a while that working with startups is, especially uh, across the board, is very difficult. And we couldn't always get the results that we wanted to get for every startup. So as, as time went along, we start to refine uh, uh, our marketing based on looking for people who who could get the greatest value from what we can do. Um, so, so we finally niched for trainers, coaches and consultants. Many businesses have to go through that process and many that we work on marketing, we, we, we kind of squeeze them into niching because no one, no business really wants to do it because the, 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 the uh, idea is that if a broader range of clients that you have, the more likely it is that you be able, the, the, sorry, there's a fear of missing out of reducing your client base. Uh, so the next thing, we're gonna get into that a little bit more uh, as we go through. The next thing, <coughs> excuse me, is delivery. 
Uh, and when you first start out, very often your processes are based on trial and error or based on your existing knowledge base or what you already know. As you, as you grow and develop, you'll need more systems to, to ensure consistency of delivery, um, delivering on your promise. I'm going to talk about that as well later on. Um, finance, uh, many uh, startups are uh, self-employed and the money is just in one account, whether it belongs to you or to the business. Uh, as you develop, you didn't possibly need a different legal structure, but you definitely have to, uh, I think, well, this has been my experience, separate out your money from the business's money, if that makes sense. And then finally, team. Um, do it, Many startups that do it all yourself, just one man band. Uh, as, you, as you build a team, you delegate and power and grow. So in this webinar, we're going to explore the systems you need to stay consistent as you grow. And speaking of team, um, Zach, uh, is with me. He is uh, newly joined us. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, two months ago, uh, he's doing a digital marketing apprenticeship. Uh, others are members of our team have um, learned lots of skills and and moved on to do other things. Um, but Zach is new, so he's going to be helping uh, on the webinar. And I'm going to hand over now to Zach, who's going to introduce himself. Hi, so uh, Graham Seth, my name's Zach. I uh, really hope that you do enjoy the information that's going to be presented to you. Um, if you've got any comments, put them on chat, and then uh, as the time is appropriate, I'll get them over to Graham. Uh, we've got one chance at the start, and then a bit later on, just at the end. Uh, so I'll hand back to Graham. Yeah, so, so we're going to have, a, I should have said at the beginning, all the microphones are mute at the moment, but there will be a, an opportunity uh, for Q&A at the end. So either either you can uh, type your questions in chat, or we can unmute you uh, in the Q and A bit, and you can we can have a chat directly. Both of those will be uh, perfectly uh, good. So without further ado, that's enough about us. Uh, let's hear a bit about you. So if you want to introduce yourself, just say a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you want to learn from the webinar. That would be really helpful, and will help me to steer the presentation in the right direction. So. Uh, feel free to type away in the chat box uh, and meanwhile I'm going to just have a little drink of water so that I can hopefully keep my voice going for the whole uh, of, the, uh, of the webinar. We'll just give you a few moments to do that. Um, uh, this this may, the purpose of this uh, presentation is mainly uh, on a systems level, so it's an overview of all the different systems. There are other videos that we've done of other webinars. This is our twenty third webinar, I think, and um, you'll be able to request access. I might refer to some of those as we go through. So if you want to get access to any of those videos, uh, we'll send you a link. Just um, just type in uh, video, please, and. Uh, we'll send you the link to the video. But they're on YouTube, but they're on Listed, so you can't search for them. So do we have any response? No messages, so it looks like we're good to work. Okay, excellent. So without further ado, then, let's get into the webinar. So there are, we're going to cover five systems. Uh, systems to make the most of your time, understand your finances, deliver on the promises to your clients as you scale, uh, develop your team, and optimize your sales and marketing. As I said, it will mainly be talking about, we'll mainly be talking about systems, uh, not about, not so much about, um... oh, it looks like we've got a, uh, got someone who's uh, introduced themselves. Yep, so, uh, sorry, we just uh, missed that. Um, so Eric has said she is a marketing strategist and looking for systems to help me scale. Oh, brilliant. Hello, Eric, are you very welcome? Thank you for joining us. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to be covering the uh, system scale. So yeah, you're definitely in the right place. Um, so let's get into, we'll just get this working again. There we go. Let's click too many times. So the first thing is systems to make the most of your time. So the first, uh, well, not the first, but one of the things I found early on is, is I always used to use a paper diary. Um, I've had a diary for years, but it was always a paper one. And we found fairly quickly that the rest of the team and I's uh, uh, timing quickly got out of sync when we're all using individual diaries. 
So now we use Google Calendar, uh, which is really effective. Uh, there are other options that are available as also well, Microsoft 365 and other options. We find uh, Google very effective. What it means is that the calendars of everyone in the team are all in one place. So any member of the team can see what's going on on that day or that week. Uh, and also it means using automation software. We use uh, Calendly. Uh, clients can book a time uh, to talk uh, either for a, a regular review or for a strategy session or whatever, or a chat or whatever they want to book. So highly, highly recommend automation software. I think we use appointment call, but I think most of our clients now are using Calendly. Uh, it's very effective and it means that literally you can send a link and the client can book the time directly in your diary and that the whole team uh, can see it if you connect up with google calendar uh, we um, <coughs> excuse me um we um what we've found is that this is also a good way to remind uh, everyone particularly me because i do copyright and i get a bit carried away sometimes uh, oh, you've got a meeting this afternoon in another half an hour, whatever, so that I can prepare for it. So that bit is really good. The other thing that about dealing with, client, uh, with clients is to create a meeting cadence. Uh, cadence just means regular meeting. So we have a, um, a Slack channel that we set for every client, uh, and we uh, which is for real time or close to real time communication. And then uh, we do a review with our clients every two weeks and a review with a, t with a team every morning and every evening. So we know uh, start of day and end of day is what we call it. So we know exactly what needs to be during that day. So we review that in the morning and in the evening, we review what did we get done during that day? Is there anything that we didn't get done that needs to be rescheduled or you know, is there anything we're waiting for for a client so we can remind them? Um, really effective. So yeah, that meeting cadence. Also track what, what you're spending in your, uh, your time on. Not necessarily for pricing, so I don't recommend cost-placed or hourly-based pricing, but, um, but for um, profit and loss, you know exactly how many hours you're spending. If you work out the average cost per hour, then you can work out the profitability. Profitability tends to follow Pareto, so 80-20, so 80% of your profit will come from 20% of your clients. If you don't know which those 20% are, it's going to be challenging. Um, and also, uh, that's from Perry Marshall, 8020 Sell the Marketing, which is a book that I highly recommend. Um, also, the aim is to, I talked about priorities earlier, the aim is to spend more time on 10,000, what, what Perry Marshall calls $10,000 an hour activities, which might, be create, which might be creating a strategy to enter a new market or a uh, uh, a strategy for um, growing the business, for example. So he differentiates between $10 an hour, $100 an hour, $1,000 an hour, and $10,000 an hour tasks. Uh, a $10 an hour task might be sending an email. So, that, so the, the idea is to get each member of the team working on their highest value tasks. Uh, and if, if you haven't got enough bandwidth in the team to do everything, then you can delegate or outsource the the lower activity tasks, which may be and lower um, uh, lower uh, lower uh, price per hour tasks, which may be, but your lower price per hour task might be someone else's higher price per hour task. So it all works out well for everybody. So if you have any questions on systems to make the most of your time, feel free to type them into the chat box. And I'm going to move on to the next uh, system, which is uh, money, money, money uh, systems to understand your finances. So I learned this from uh, Dan Bradbury. Really, really good idea is to create three bank accounts for your business. One for the operating expenses, which is the money that you spend to actually run the business. One for the VAT. If you're VAT registered, you will need to be if you're scaling up almost certainly. And... Uh, <clears throat> it's a really bad idea to mix money that you owe to HMRC with your own money. You're going to keep it separate, just put it in a separate account. So when the VAT payment is due, you know you've got it there and in the account, uh, you can pay it straight away. Uh, and then one account for profit. So if you work out what your average profit is, every month you can put the profit for that month uh, into a separate bank account, which means you've got it. Uh, to one side uh, to pay your corporation tax uh, at the end of the year 
uh, or obviously to pay yourself dividends or retain it or whatever you're going to do with a profit. So three bank accounts, highly, highly recommended. Um, the the um, uh, I don't know what they called um, the the new banks like Revolut and uh, Starling uh, are uh, very good at offering. They offer free business bank accounts, so that's that's how we did it. Um, next step is to utilize accounting software. Really uh, useful. Uh, we use Zero. Um, it means you can get reports on where you are on your finances in that month or even on that day provided, of course, that keep the records up to date. Uh, I do the bookkeeping for our business every day because I want to know exactly what's going on uh, with the finances. But you can uh, outsource that, and I think we probably will at some point outsource. The third thing is hire an accountant. Highly, highly recommended. Um, I, when, when I first started business, which was before digital freelance, I remember putting the first year's accounts in myself uh, and literally I had a bag full of uh, receipts that I had to go through individually. And, you know, I'd never do that again. So yeah, definitely use accounting software to keep track and then get an accountant to, to, to crunch the numbers at the end of the year. Really, 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 really important is to calculate your break even and set targets for revenue, gross margin and net profit. Once you have a team, you have a responsibility to other people to pay them every month. It's very different to being self-employed and working for yourself. So you need to really be on top of the finances. You know you've got the money in the bank to pay the wages at the end of the month. All the entrepreneurs that I've spoke to, spoken to have this same uh, philosophy in life, but well, it's not really a philosophy, it's a pragmatic, practical thing that you have to pay the team. And we did. I did, we did talk to a potential new client the other day who uh, who told us that he's set up a new team and he wasn't tracking the numbers properly and so he got into difficulties. So yeah, really important, track the numbers. Revenue is the amount that you, that you invoice. Gross margin is the amount that's left over after you've paid your operating, what are called operating costs. So if you have direct costs looking to a project, that would be operating costs or direct material costs. For a lot of service businesses, there's a lot of the cost is overhead. So net profit is after you've taken off the overhead. There are lots of little simple mini online courses online to learn finance. If you don't already understand finance, I highly, highly recommend that you do this because if you try and scale a business that is loss making, making it bigger is not, it may make it more, more profitable, but it probably won't. And if you try and scale a loss-making business, that's really not a good idea. Uh, and I recommend highly is looking at your P&L, profit and loss, at least once a month. I tend to look at it a couple of times every month just to check where we are and just to make sure that we're on track. Really, really important. Any questions on the systems to understand your finances, please feel free to enter them in the, to type them in the chat now. And I'm gonna move on to systems to manage, living on your promises to your clients. Just, just to come back to this, the back to finance for a moment. If you're not profitable, you won't be able to consistently deliver for your clients. So it's really, really important because you, you can't. A loss-making business is not going to be able to uh, manage uh, to deliver the promises. So it's really, really important to manage the finances. So this is the client bit. When most, many businesses start off, we find this a lot with businesses that we work with. The business is in the head of the business owner. The key to, to scaling is to get the business out of the head of the business owner and into some place where it can be seen by uh, more people. A project management system is a really good place to, to put that information. What we do is we write a plan for every client which, which describes exactly what we're going to do over the period of time over which we're going to do it. We share that with the clients, so they know what we're doing. We also share it with the team, so the team knows what we're doing. And then we put that plan into a project management system. As I was saying, we use Asana, other options are available. We did review the market about four or five years ago. And we found that Asana was the best uh, for our needs, but there are other systems uh, available as well. Um, break the activities down into smaller pieces. Even if these are activities that you're gonna do, it's really important 
that you that you have it uh, written into a, you know, a project management system, and then you can check off the activities when they're done. So you know that everything is being done to meet the needs of the client. Uh, allocate clear responsibilities so in the project management system. You can put who's uh, doing the activity and uh, when they need to do it by. Uh, I review regularly, I think I mentioned earlier, we review it at the start of the day and at the end of the day. Uh, that's our meeting cadence for team activities. So yeah, any questions on systems to manage delivery, uh, feel free to enter them in the chat now. Um, and now, so in terms of team development, there, there are two aspects to this. One is the soft skills that you need to, to coach and nurture and develop and grow your team. That's not really what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here are the, the kind of the more system aspects. So the first thing is contract and employment, really super important um, so, that, so that you have an agreement with your uh, team that they all know individually what they're doing what they get paid, what their holiday entitlement is, pensions, all that kind of stuff. All goes in the contract of employment. Uh, consistent hiring. Um, it's what I found in the past is that people tend often have a blind spot when they're hiring. So they either hire people who are like them, which is not a good idea. Uh, that's the IBM, that's what nearly killed IBM back in the eighties. Um, or they hire people who will never be a threat to them. I would recommend hiring people who can develop and grow to eventually uh, take on a bigger role within the business. That's that's the best way to do it. And I highly, highly recommend uh, a trial where you bring uh, the person in and get them to do the job for a day, as well as doing interviewing. It really helps that, first of all, it helps them to understand if it's the right job for them. And it helps you to assess how they will do the job, but also more importantly, how they will learn because any new hire, any new person that you hire will have to learn things in order to be able to do the job effectively. Role description is really important so that you break down all the uh, activities that are required so you have a clear understanding. Inspiration and motivation is super important. That's one of the big benefits of having a smaller team or a smaller business is you can know everyone in the business and, and, and kind of have a common purpose or a, a a thing that inspires you. Uh, serving clients is, is often a thing that uh, inspires people and also making a difference. Transformational marketing is one of the big things that we do. So particularly, so all of our team, we think about things in terms of transformation and results. Uh, and then finally training. Udemy is a very, very good source of online training. And excuse me, and it's a really good way of filling in little dips in the day. So if there's a quiet hour, uh, you can say to your uh, team, oh, just go on Udemy and, you know, learn. What, what we do, what I do is I have like a few courses that I've done that I know are good. And then uh, Zach is working on a course at the moment, a Seth Godin freelancer course. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a really good way. There's lots of other uh, really good stuff on Udemy as well. Digital Marketer is also great training, but it's a little bit more specialist uh, uh, marketing uh, training. And just get the slides working again. Oops. So, oh no, actually, no, we're right, we're good. So, <laughs> so next bit, yeah, yeah, well, don't know, we can't skip past that. This is really fun. Uh, systems to optimize your sales and marketing. So, <laughs> excuse me, this is. We have got other videos which go much more deeply into this topic. This is just an overview. Uh, I guess the first thing to say is that we uh, use within our business the systems that we that we implement for our clients. So we kind of go first and test things. So over, over the years, we've developed templates for certain things, which is very useful. And also marketing automation is definitely the way to go with marketing. So. And with, with a personal touch as well, it's not just about automation. Automation is just one aspect of it. We highly recommend using a CRM. We use Infusionsoft, lots of other options are available. Um, also designing a marketing funnel, which is basically the customer journey, the steps uh, that a prospective client goes through to become a client, and then sales process and pipeline so that your marketing and sales process is one smooth flow. 
from marketing through sales into onboarding uh, and then delivering on your promise. Uh, so that's how that's the system that that's the basic structure of the system uh, that we use. More than happy to have a conversation about that um, separately, or if you want to get one of the videos that I mentioned earlier, um, there's one called How to Enroll New Clients that have been pushy or salesy, which is uh, very popular. Uh, and there's one also how to nurture your uh, clients with content. Uh, I think it's called that or something similar. So if you'd like either, either of those, feel free to put that in the chat. So, right, we got there. So are you ready to design your systems? I'm gonna leave that uh, as a question with you. And then uh, if you wanna share experiences, more, more than happy to do that. I love chatting as you can probably gather. Um, so here's a link uh, which uh, Ruben will, Ruben? Ruben was, Ruben Zach's for you, which Zach will put into the chat box for you. And um, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to have a chat. We can share experiences. We are obviously also on Oxy Agency. So if you want to have a chat about your marketing, more than happy to do that as well. Uh, you can book a 20 minute slot in my calendar here. This is what I was talking about earlier about using uh, automation links. Thank you.